to this series of videos on um, Pansu's version of, uh, of the Rademacher theorem for Carnot groups. Uh, in this video, we will prove the, the theorem for maps on the one-dimensional Carnot groups, namely R, or, or on, a, on, a, on an interval of R. In other words, we have we are considering a Lipschitz curve into a Carnot group. And we're going to prove that almost everywhere on the domain of interval, uh, the map is differentiable in the intrinsic sense, namely using the intrinsic dilations of the Heisenberg group, of the Carnot group, uh, to define the differential. And the differential is going to be a group morphism from R into the Carnot group. Let's see. Okay, so let's state the proposition. So we have gamma, a curve on an interval, let's say that this interval is zero, one, valued into G. So this is a Lipschitz curve on a Carnot group. G. Then we're going to prove that for almost almost every um, x in zero one, the curve gamma is intrinsically differentiable. at x and the differential has this property for all h in uh, r the intrinsic differential at x valued into h is as this form exponential of h times the differential of the left translation the point gamma x applied to gamma dot x, where this gamma dot x, I will explain now more, this is just the classical derivative, a uh, usual derivative. It's uh, a so classical usual derivative. Mm -hmm. Because remember that uh, if we have uh, uh, if, if a Carnot Caradeodori distance on, on, the Carnot, on a Carnot group, then we can find a Riemannian uh, metric that is uh, smaller than this Carnot Caradeodori. And this will imply that the, the, the curve is not only Lipschitz when in G we put the Carnot distance, but also the Riemannian distance. So g gamma is Lipschitz in the Euclidean sense. And therefore, it's differentiable because of the classical Rademacher theorem. So this object exists almost everywhere. Hmm? And now you see, okay, now when you push it forward, now this is an element of the, um, the Lie algebra. And now you see that this map, as a map in H, is a group morphism from the additive R to the multiplicative group G. Now, for completeness, completeness, let me remind you what is the definition of the intrinsic derivative in this sense, in this case. So, uh, what what you do, you take uh, h, you dilate by t. But now we are in the Euclidean setting, and therefore dilating by t is just the usual multiplication by t. Then we are in a billion group, so multiple left translation by x is just x. You apply gamma. Now you are in the current group. Now you have to multiply by the inverse of gamma x, and then you left translate and you dilate by one over t. So this limit is by definition the intrinsic differential. Okay, let's see more remarks about this uh, uh, result before proving it. So remarks. So the first one was about 
uh, this uh, the existence of gamma dot, right? So at gamma x, you have the existence of gamma dot x almost everywhere, or almost every x. This is was because, as I was saying before, if gamma is Carnot Lipschitz, so it's Lipschitz with respect to the Carnot distance, then this implies this Riemannian distance, Riemannian Lipschitz. And this is because um, we can extend the, the Riemannian, we can take find a Riemannian distance that is smaller than the Carnot distance. No? So uh, you see that uh, if it is a Lipschitz with target in the target this distance, it's Lipschitz also for this distance here. No? And therefore, gamma is differentiable almost everywhere in a classical sense. Hmm? So this, this vector here exists. And now what do we do? I, I will bring it back via uh, the, uh, sorry, the left translation by gamma t. Goes. So I bring it back to the origin, to the one, or yeah, to one. And this is this, this vector, dl gamma x minus one applied to gamma dot x. Hmm? This is an element of the Lie algebra of G, right? which uh, defines a one parameter subgroup, okay? All right. Um, another remark that I want to do is the fact that actually having the existence of the intrinsic differential is a stronger property than having equilibrium differentiability. Okay. In fact, we saw, we saw that equilibrium differentiability is for free from the standard equity uh, Rademacher theorem. But, but really, if you have a point where you have intrinsic differentiability, then you must have also equilibrium differentiability. So let me write it. So if you have Pansu or intrinsic, it's the same, you know, it's just in terminology, intrinsic differentiability, then this implies Euclidean differentiability. Why? And it, um, okay, let me change page. Okay, let, let's, let's make it simple. Say that uh, we have x uh, is the zero and gamma zero is, uh, is the identity of the group, okay? And let's write in, uh, in exponential coordinates, exponential coordinates, uh, with respect to the stratification, we write gamma t to be, so there is the component along v1, the component along v2, and so on up to vs. Hmm? This is in v1, vs. Okay, now, when we do the standard uh, differential, right? so the, the derivative in zero, what is this? This is the limit because in zero is, is zero is gamma t divided by t. Right? So it's the limit of gamma one t divided by t, gamma s t divided by t, okay? And actually what is happening in this limit is that I claim that this is really, uh, okay, this the first vector converges and also all the others are zero. W why am I claiming, I'm writing this uh, um, equality? It's because the curve being Lipschitz, it's horizontal. We, 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 we discussed already that curves that have finite length are exactly the same that curves that are horizontal and, and Lipschitz curve of finite length. Hmm? So it, this is since gamma is horizontal. So the derivative should only have component on v, along v1. Hmm? So the existence of the derivative and horizontal derivative is the fact that all these uh, limits for each component is zero. Now, uh, let me write it also as a differential. So as a differential, 
we would write. So the differential at zero of gamma, which is just gamma zero as a, as a, vec as a vector applied to, as a linear vector applied to h. This is just the limit of gamma th over t, which is, um, it's not, uh, yes, uh, th, which is equal to uh, h gamma dot zero. zero. Okay. Now, what about when we consider uh, instead the intrinsic differential? The intrinsic differential, we have to take the limit of the curve dilated by t. This is the Euclidean, the Euclidean, uh, this is the Euclidean dilation. But then we have to dilate by one over t the point. And now this is the dilation of the kernel group, which what does it, okay, it dilates by t or one over t, the first layer, but then the second layer is divided by t squared and so on. Gamma s t divide t to the s, okay? So this is what uh, the intrinsic dilation is saying, right? So a priori, okay, let's say that this limit exists. So it is true that the first horizontal part, okay, I forgot the h, sorry, let me add the h here, yeah. h, h, h. Hmm. So the first part is just the same of this one here. So the limit is again, uh, h gamma dot zero. And then there are all these other limits. And now Pansu's limit, Pansu's uh, theorem, says that they are still zero. Pansu claims they are zero. And you see the fact that this ratio is zero is a weaker property than saying that this is zero. Let me stress it. So saying that for j from two to s, we have gamma j th over t j goes to zero as t goes to zero implies, implies, so it's stronger, then saying that gamma j th over t goes to zero. Hmm? Okay, so this was to explain you that uh, that Pansu a, a, a point of Pansu differenti differentiation is, is a stronger requirement. Hmm? Okay. Okay, so let's start the proof of Pansu's Rattemacher theorem for curves, for Lipschitz curves. So let's, let's remember what we want to prove. We want to prove that the intrinsic differential of a Lipschitz curve exists for almost every x, and it actually has this form here. First of all, by homogeneity, we can just prove that uh, uh, this statement for h equal to one. So by homogeneity, we may assume h equal to one. Now, let's put ourselves in coordinates um, uh, and, and take vector fields for, uh, for v1. So fix a basis x1, xn, uh, a basis for, uh, for v1 of left invariant vector fields, okay? So now the fact that gamma is Lipschitz, this implies that there are controls for functions that we call controls, u1, um, function that are bounded, defined on zero one. So our curve was defined on zero one into R. And there is some L, L is actually the Lipschitz constant, such that 
uh, so these are controls, namely the derivative is equal to the sum of, uh, so, sorry, the, the vectors were m, uh, rank m distribution. So uh, the controls at time t times the vector field at the point gamma t. Mm -hmm. So this is saying that you are the controls of gamma and the, the controls are almost everywhere uh, bounded by L. Of course, we can replace them to be always bounded. Uh, so for, for all J from one to M and for all T in the interval uh, zero, one. Hmm? Okay, so let's, I, I take the following full set of points in the domain. So take, take the full measure set of points X in zero one, such that, so gamma is differentiable in the classical sense uh, at X, so it's classically differentiable at x and x is a Lebesgue point point for uj for all j okay let me recall you what is uh, being a Lebesgue point it means if you integrate between uh, on a neighborhood of x and then you take the average integral of uh, the function uj uh, s and you remove the value at the point x in ds, this goes to zero as epsilon goes to zero, okay? Now it's a, it's a general fact from, uh, from function analysis with the, whenever you have a measurable function, inter integrable function, that almost every point is a Lebesgue point for the, for the function and um, Okay, so this is so. This is a that are, this is a full measure set with this property, full measure set of this property. Actually, th this is a stronger property than the first one. But okay, so let, let's have these two properties, and these are true for almost everywhere x. Okay, so now we just let's fix one such x, one such x. Hmm. Now fix x, now we translate the curve in such a way that we are going to work at zero. So we we uh, we can replace gamma with left translation by gamma minus one compose gamma compose left translation by x. This is what one consider in the, in the definition of dif uh, intrinsic differentiable. So we can assume x is equal to zero and gamma of zero is equal to uh, the identity element. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we need to prove is something about the blow up of this curve gamma. So the claim is that when you dilate intrinsically the curve. So here I'm, I'm putting one times the the dilation by t, which in on on R is just t. Then when you take the limit, then we claim that this is has to be the deri the, the Euclidean derivative at, at zero of gamma. Okay. And remember that this is equal to just the sum of the controls at zero x, j, zero. This is because the, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a the leg point. Hmm. Okay, so we, we need to prove this. Okay, so let's, let's give a name to this map as a function of, uh, as with parameter t. So let uh, eta t define as the dilation by one over t of gamma of precomposed with delta t, okay? 
So observe that all this delta t in zero are equal to zero, uh, are equal to the identity of the group. And eta t are all L Lipschitz uh, indeed. So let's, let's, let's check this Lipschitz, okay? It's an easy calculation, let's do it. So the, look at the distance between eta at s and eta at s prime. This by definition, these are uh, delta one over t gamma of ts, delta one over t gamma of ts prime. Here I'm using that on r the dilation is the usual uh, scalar dilation. Okay, now let's use first that the, the dilation on the Carnot group dilate the distance by the factor. So this is one over t distance of gamma ts gamma ts prime. Now let's use the fact that gamma is L Lipschitz, one over t L times ts minus ts prime, which is equal to L s minus s prime. So we have proved that for all t, eta t is L Lipschitz, okay? So therefore we can use ascoli Zela. Tell us that eta t is a, is a family, in the parameter t, this is precompact. So every sequence has a converging subsequence. Every sequence has a converging subsequence. Now what we have to prove that all the possible subsequence they converge to the same sequence, which is the curve that we guessed. So what we do, we claim that all the sequences converge to eta, call it eta zero, which at S is just S, um, I have to put the exponential. Exponential of S gamma zero, gamma prime at zero. Okay, this is what we claim. Let's start with a preliminary observation. Observation. So the curve eta for all parameter t is obviously a uh, horizontal curve because it was just a, the dilation of a horizontal curve. Let's calculate its controls. Okay, so what is the derivative of eta? So the derivative, the parameter was s. The curve was the dilation of gamma dilated in time. Hmm? Of course, this delta t s this Euclidean dilation we can just write t s. Okay, so <clears throat> chain rule. So this is the differential of the map delta one over t of gamma dot at the point ts times the derivative in s of ts, which is t. Okay. Now, um, let's use the fact that gamma is horizontal, right? So here, uh, let's remember, we, we called u the controls of, of gamma. So now we have differential of the dilation applied to um, the sum of uj at the point ts of um, xj at the point gamma ts, and that was the t. Um, let's put the t here, okay? So this is some j from one to m, where m was the rank of the distribution, okay? So uh, now let's let's use the fact that, um, so this map here, this dilation, hmm, dilate horizontal vectors exactly by t. So now I, I calculate the differential at this vector field. So this is sum, of t uj 
Ts of 1 over t xj at the point for delta t gamma delta 1 over t gamma Ts. In other words, so now the t cancel and we have uj Ts xj at the point uh, eta Ts. So what we observe is that the controls of the curve gamma are exactly the same uh, controls as before, but uh, dilated in time by t. Okay, so let's just remember this formula, which because we are going to use it soon. Okay, now we want to consider the limits of this uh, eta t when t goes to zero. So let's just take xi uh, be a limit point, so a limit of eta tn for some tn converging to zero. Okay, we want to show that this is the one parameter um, subgroup that we, uh, uh, coming from uh, the derivative of gamma. Now, if we show that this curve xi satisfy this following equation is, uh, is the horizontal curve with control constantly equal of gamma j at zero. If we prove this, then, then this curve here, xi, has to be the one parameter subgroup associated to gamma dot zero, because um, also this curve satisfies this uh, ordinary differential equation. Of course, all these curves start at zero, huh? and, and therefore we are done. So what we have to prove is that every limit satisfies this property. Okay, now let's give an, uh, a name to the curve that has this left hand side, uh, right hand side as derivative. So let sigma uh, to be, um, let's be the curve, curve, uh, with, uh, of course, sigma zero is the identity and uh, sigma dot at S is equal to the right hand side. Right, zero, X, J, X, C, S. Hmm. Now, what we want to show is that this curve coincide with C. Hmm. And there, for we are done. Hmm. Now, okay, let's show that these curves are the same. We will bound the difference. Now, then we estimate the difference between sigma at some value, let's uh, call it uh, v, and xi at v. And therefore, we consider the approximation eta t minus eta tn of v. So these are absolutely continuous curves, so they're the integral of their derivatives, sigma dot s minus eta dot tn s in ds. Now, <clears throat> sigma was defined to be the curve whose derivative is, uh, uh, is um, the constant u zero, vector field x, j, x, c, s, okay? Eta, eta, we proved that it was a horizontal with controls u, j, s, t, n, the vector field x, j, eta, t, n, s. Hmm? This was what we proved before. So we have this, this bound, okay? So this, this equality, this equality, okay? Now we bound, okay. Tuck, tuck, tuck. So, um, so now this is going to be less or equal, 
let's put the sum outside, the integral outside, and we have u j zero x j uh, c. Now let's add and subtract. Let's do also a triangle inequality. I'm going to add and subtract um, u i j s t times x j c s. So I'm going to have two terms. So this is minus u j s t that multiplies x j c s plus, um, and then I'm going to have uh, u j s t uh, that multiplies the norm of x j c s minus x j eta t n s d s. Hmm? Okay. Now let's focus first on this term here. Hmm? Okay. Remember, all these uh, numbers are bounded by L. Hmm? Now. What about this norm? The, the curve eta is converging, eta, the sequence eta tn are converging to xi uniformly. And a, a, xj are continuous. Therefore, we have that this is going to zero also when integrated. And then um, this is because eta tn converge to xi and uh, cj are continuous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this term, it's, it's okay. It's going to zero. What about this term here? Okay, this norm is bounded because we are in a bounded set. Mm -hmm. And these are continuous vector fields. Now, I, I would like to show you that uh, the integral of, of this diff, of non-modulus of this difference also goes to, go, is going to zero. So, so I want to show that this is going to zero. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's prove this. Hmm? Okay, so what I want to consider is the integral between zero and v of u j zero minus u j t s. Let me remove the the, the depends on t on on n hmm? t s. Okay, now. This is, of course, less than the integral between 0 and 1, uj0 minus uj ts. Now, let's perform a change of variable, s ts equal s prime. So I'm changing variable in the integral. So this is the integral between uj0, uj s prime, ds becomes ds prime over t, and the integral is now from zero to t. Now, as you see, because I'm dividing here, I can remove this, this is an uh, average integral, okay? Therefore, as t goes to zero, this integral goes to zero. This, I'm using the fact that zero is a Lebesgue point for uh, uj, okay? So what we proved is that also this term goes to zero. So this is equal going to zero when n goes to infinity. Mm -hmm. And therefore we proved that sigma coincide with xi, and therefore xi dot satisfy this constant uh, uh, control as constant control equal to u0. Hmm? And therefore, c is, um, say at s, as a function of s, is exp s gamma dot zero. Hmm? So we proved that every blow up of the Lipschitz curve is the one parameter subgroup we wanted. And this concludes the proof of the uh, Rademacher theorem for uh, Lipschitz curves into Carnot groups. 
If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel. Clicking below. Bye.